Hello, my dear colleagues. I am very glad to be with you today. And I have got a good uh, a piece of good news, but I will tell you about it a little bit later. And as you know, today we are going to talk about challenges of teaching English in new Ukrainian school. Well, I work in school. And in our school, teachers of English work with pupils from the first year up to the final year. So we have to deal with the pupils of all ages. And uh, we also uh, work uh, with the primary pupils. And I know what challenges can teacher uh, face. So today we are going to talk about some of these challenges a little bit. And then I will tell you um, a piece of good news. Uh, you know that uh, modern society expects very much from a teacher. Uh, what kind of roles should teacher play in modern school? Well, you know, uh, a modern teacher is a facilitator. A modern teacher is a coach. A modern teacher is a tutor. Uh, a mentor. A psychologist. Also, a modern teacher is an actor. And uh, scientist and inventor. I think that you know all these words and you agree with me that modern teacher has so many roles. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, people around us forget that a modern teacher is just an ordinary person with his or her needs. And uh, a modern teacher uh, has got uh, his or her private life, and it is very difficult to have enough time for everything. Modern teacher has got lots of duties. You know, it is not a top secret, and uh, you and me have to do lots of things at school, such as prepare for our lessons. Also, we have to teach our pupils. We have to write a lot of documents. You know, it's very well. Also, we have to check up pupils' works and it takes a lot of time. We have to communicate with parents of our pupils. We have to attend different courses. Also, we have to organize different school events. And we have to take part in seminars and webinars, you know. And uh, we are just people and we uh, need to have uh, time for our own needs, I think it is very important. And you agree with me that the members of our families need our attention and our care. And what can be if we have no energy, if we have no um, time for our families and for our dearest and nearest. And if we have no um, mood, we are so busy, the result will be as the following. We will feel tired, we will get interest to our work. And what can we do to avoid this situation? Uh, we can um, reduce the amount of uh, uh, preparation for our lessons. C 
can we reduce the amount of time spending with our pupils and their parents? Can we reduce the number of documents? Of course not. What shall we do to save uh, the situation? Um, today, I will offer you the solution. And in my opinion, the solution is the following. Choose the right textbook. If we choose the right textbook for our lessons, we can spend less time for preparation. We can spend less time for, find, for finding or looking for supplementary materials for different um, school events, for different um, types of lessons like uh, preparation for tests and so on. And it can be a real solution to our problem. So if we choose the right textbook, perhaps we can help, we can save our time and we can save our energy. Uh, in my opinion, this is one of the ways to solve this problem. So, uh, but to choose a perfect textbook is also difficult. And even experienced teachers um, hesitate which book to choose, this or that. You know, there are lots of different kinds of textbooks uh, today. And um, the most difficult thing is to make the right choice. Sometimes you take the book and you look through it and you do not understand how to work with it. You see lots of pictures and no texts or vice versa. You can see uh, lots of texts and no pictures and you do not understand what to do with it. So what should a perfect textbook be like? Well, I think that a perfect textbook should be modern. Uh, when we take it to our hands and we see interesting texts, interesting and bright pictures, um, it is uh, really good and it uh, can attract our attention and the attention of our pupils. So a perfect textbook should be modern and contain uh, interesting, um, up-to-date information. Then uh, a perfect textbook should be informative. Of course, if you see only pictures and no other information, it is not informative. Uh, and the information should be also up-to-date and uh, useful so that our pupils uh, can have benefits of using it. A good textbook should be well organized. I mean, uh, the, um, it should be divided into lessons and you, if you take this textbook uh, uh, into your hands, you can understand how to work with it. And every um, sign should help you in this textbook. A modern textbook should be teacher friendly. Uh, I mean that uh, it should have some uh, support, like um, uh, workbooks developed for this textbook, like uh, audio support, like tests, because I often see in the social networks posts from teachers about um, the information that they need some uh, tests or they need some extra information for this or that textbook. Um, it takes a lot of time to find necessary information. So in my opinion, uh, the textbook should be teacher friendly so that teachers could save their time uh, to work with this book. Uh, of course, this book should be interesting. It must be interesting for both, for teachers and for pupils, uh, because the teacher, when the teacher works with the book that is not interesting, 
he or she loses interest to eat and uh, the lessons will suffer from it. The lessons will be not interesting for pupils and the motivation of pupils to learn foreign languages will disappear as well. So uh, the modern textbook should contain exercises of different types. It is really very necessary. Uh, it is very good for primary learners because they are going to come to secondary school. And you know that the final result will be preparation for the exams. So uh, pupils uh, have to learn to work with different types of exercises. A good textbook uh, must develop language skills, you know, and we are going to talk about language skills a little bit later. Then, uh, as I have already said, the textbook should be teacher friendly and include audio resources. It is especially important for studying foreign languages because when our pupils can listen to uh, different people speaking a uh, foreign language, uh, they will be trained better. Uh, so the uh, good textbook should include supplementary resources, as I have already said. Uh, they are uh, just maybe the most simple, such as a workbook and tests. Uh, it is very good if um, the, there are any other supplementary resources as flashcards, teachers' books, and so on. Uh, it, it is also really good. And finally, uh, a good textbook should develop life competences like critical thinking, creative thinking, and uh, emotional emotions and you know we have got uh, um, some seminars uh, that uh, discuss these uh, life competencies um, so what can what kind of exercises should be included into the good textbook um, we are speaking about uh, learning foreign languages. That's why, uh, uh, in my opinion, such exercises that uh, develop uh, reading skills, listening skills, speaking skills, and writing skills are necessary. They must be in every lesson in a good textbook and of course exercises which can help develop and enrich pupils vocabulary uh, you know we have already discussed uh, some of these um, skills in our previous webinars and now all these uh, criteria are important for a perfect textbook and now I want to uh, tell about uh, books, textbooks for primary school startup, uh, which have been published by uh, um, a publishing house Ranak. You know these textbooks now. Uh, they are for the first, second, and third year learners. I know that uh, many teachers work with these textbooks. Uh, I would like to get your feedback about using these textbooks. So if you work with them, please share your impressions. And uh, maybe you have got some um, wishes how we can make uh, these textbooks better, what can be done to improve them. Uh, we will be glad to get any information from you, please. But now we have got textbooks for the first, second and third year learners. And supplementary materials for these books are also available. We have got workbooks for 
all these textbooks. And also we have got tests for the third year learners. Uh, I should remind that um, also uh, audio support is available for all these three textbooks. And um, these audio recordings have been done by our uh, friends, native speakers. So uh, this uh, support will be really helpful. And you can find additional materials in the website of Publishing House Ranak. You know, uh, pupil, uh, teachers and pupils who use our textbooks can uh, make um, interactive exercises in the uh, website of Expressing Publishing Ranak. So we have got interactive exercises for every textbook. And now a good piece of news. Uh, this is our next textbook, which is for the fourth year learners. I'm very glad to introduce this textbook to you. Uh, I think you will find it really helpful and interesting and comfortable for teaching in school. And we are going to take part in all Ukrainian competition of textbooks. I hope you will be, um, you will take part in it and you will choose our textbook. Uh, that's why I want you to know more about it. And uh, now I'm going to tell you uh, in details. So, as I have already thought, a good textbook uh, has to include um, exercises of different types and kinds. And these exercises must develop reading, speaking, writing, listening skills and enrich pupils' vocabulary. Also, a good book should be according to current curriculum. And um, now we are going to compare uh, the curriculum of foreign languages and the units which are in our new textbook. So according to the curriculum of foreign languages, pupils of the fourth form should um, be able to um, speak, to learn, to communicate, read, write, understand uh, the following spheres. Spheres of communication are my family, friends and me, apartment, rest and leisure, person, nature and environment of Ukraine and English speaking countries, travel around Ukraine and to English speaking countries, holidays and traditions, and finally school life. What units can you see in uh, our textbook start up for? So they are happy family and friends, um, which is uh, uh, about family and friends, home sweet home, where pupils learn to talk about their uh, homes. Uh, next unit is our busy free time. Uh, the children learn to uh, talk about rest and leisure. Healthy people are happy people. Uh, we are go we, the pupils will uh, learn to speak about uh, people, about their health, about healthy way of lifestyle. Then um, our beautiful planet, which introduces the sphere, nature and environment of Ukraine and English speaking countries. Then uh, we like traveling, where pupils learn to talk about traveling to uh, foreign countries and traveling around Ukraine. And finally, school life is introduced uh, by the unit school is school. So as you can see, 
uh, our uh, textbook includes all the necessary topics uh, according to the curriculum of foreign languages. Here you can see the contents uh, where there are units, all these units that I have just told you about, and every unit consists of 12 lessons. There are lessons um, such as story time lessons and lessons which are called We Are Creative. I'm going to tell about them a little bit later uh, because I think they um, require special attention. And also every unit finishes with the lessons of revision. I will show you the examples of these lessons uh, during our webinar. Well, as I have already said, uh, every lesson should include exercises for developing reading, writing, listening, and speaking skills and vocabulary as well. And as I have already said too, uh, the information in the textbook should be modern, interesting, and informative. What kind of exercises can you find in our textbook? Well, uh, reading exercises, there are many different types of reading exercises, and they um, are presented uh, in different ways. Here you can see the text, which is the example of um, communication through the social networks. Children, you, if you work with our book, you know the main characters. If you don't, we have got main characters who live in Ukraine. Uh, they are Alenka and Vlad. And we have got uh, children, uh, Alenka and Vlad's friends, who live in Great Britain. Um, and also we have got two uh, aliens, they are Polly and Rolly, they are very funny and uh, um, children like them a lot. So the communication is between Ukrainian children and British children. And they use different kinds of communication, different ways to communicate. One of them is uh, through the social networks, they uh, text messages and uh, in this way, they communicate to each other. Uh, here is the example of such an uh, exercise. So uh, pupils have to listen and then read the chat. And after that, pupils have to answer the questions. Uh, it is important to mention that almost all reading exercises have got uh, audio recordings so that uh, children learn to pronounce and read the words in the correct way. Uh, from our point of view, it is really very important because um, uh, personally, I often face the problem that our children um, pronounce the words in their own way because they uh, um, adapt these words to Ukrainian or Russian language and uh, they often make mistakes in pronunciation. That's why it is really important to teach our pupils pronounce the words correctly. And uh, the, in this case, audio uh, recordings are really helpful. So one of the examples of reading exercises is the uh, chat uh, in social networks. Another example is uh, um, of exercise you can see here. This is uh, when uh, British children go to the excursion to the royal palace and they tell about uh, royal family. Uh, 
I think it is really interesting because uh, now we have got a lot of information about royal family in mass media and children are interested in it. They want to know more about royal family. And this is the way to learn more about family um, of uh, royal family of uh, Great Britain. One more example is um, a chart uh, in the website. Um, Ukrainian children, uh, Olenka and Vlad, uh, decided to have friends from different countries and they created a website and they sent information about Ukraine to other countries. And of course, they get information from different countries um, in uh, uh, this site. And here is the example of reading exercise, um, which is created as the uh, internet chat. Uh, it is important to say that uh, every reading exercise has got tasks to check up the understanding of the text. The exercises for checking up the understanding are also different. They are uh, exercises uh, of matching. Um, we also made up exercises, uh, um, multiple choice, uh, and uh, simple um, questions which pupils need to answer after reading the texts. Here is the example of email letter, uh, which is also modern way of communication. And uh, re while reading uh, such texts, Pupils step by step learn or get prepared for creating their own uh, email letters, which is really very necessary in um, our um, secondary school. And it is also very necessary for uh, further preparation of for exams. Also, there are a lot of dialogues. Here is the example of a dialogue which pupils listen first, then read, and the exercise um, uh, for matching is the way to check up the understanding of the dialogue. After that, you can ask your pupils to act out this dialogue. Why not? We have got a lot of dialogues in our textbook. And here is one more exercise, read and match. Uh, in this way, pupils learn to tell the time, to understand the time, to tell the time. Um, this is this kind of exercise. So there are different types of exercises for develop reading skills. As you can see, they are quite modern. They are interesting. Uh, in my opinion, your pupils will enjoy doing these exercises. And step by step, they will learn uh, some new things and they will get prepared for secondary school. Listening exercises. As I have already said, listening is a very important skill. So uh, we have got audio recordings and every lesson has got at least one exercise to develop listening skills. These exercises are also different. For example, you can see the exercise for matching uh, pupils listen to the time and they need to match the time with different kinds of activities. Um, exercise six in this slide uh, shows us another type of uh, listening uh, exercise. Um, in this case, the picture can be used uh, for doing the task 
and then for playing the game. Uh, this is um, the task when pupils listen to some instructions, then they um, point some places which are mentioned in the instructions, and they should answer the final question. I will not tell you what this di dialogue and what are the instructions about. Let it be a kind of intrigue. But when the task um, has been completed, you can use this picture for playing games. And exercise seven is the uh, explanation for this game. So the next slide. Uh, here is uh, the example of listening task with multiple choice. You know, such uh, tasks um, are typical for secondary school. And uh, uh, in this way, our pupils get ready for secondary school. And you know, the such types of exercises um, are included into different kinds of tests and for our independent testing at the end of the school. Uh, so uh, this exercise is really useful. And our pupils learn how to deal with tasks of this kind. And uh, more typical exercise for primary school and uh, um, the exercise which is often used in secondary school as well. This is true-false choice. Uh, when pupils listen and decide if that statement is true or false, and they mark it in some special way. As you can see, our textbook includes all these possible uh, tasks. Here is one more example of multiple choice. Uh, this, in this time, uh, the pupils have to choose between two options, not three options. But anyway, this task is really useful for developing listening skills and for um, developing understanding of the foreign language. Now we are, have come up to speaking exercises. Speaking is really very important because, as you know, we learn any foreign language to communicate with other people. So speaking is um, necessary and uh, this is the most difficult skill to develop in our school. Uh, because, uh, you know, there are lots of problems to teach our pupils uh, to speak. And um, we hope that exercises uh, that you can find in our textbook will be very helpful. Uh, there are lots of dialects. The, you can see the example of one of such dialects. So first, your pupils read and act uh, this dialogue out. Uh, you can see underlined words in this dialogue. And uh, um, this is uh, the second step towards, uh, towards um, teaching our pupils create their own dialects. So children need to replace underlined words with other words. Firstly, in the initial step, we offer to use some words from the boxes. You can see part B of this exercise, where there are two boxes and some words are given there. And pupils can choose the words from these boxes to create their own dialects. Um, but I know from my own experience, some pupils are very creative and they prefer using their own ideas. And this is really good. After uh, they uh, have made their, ex their dialogues, they enjoy acting the dialogues out. And it's a real fun for them. They adore uh, such kind of activity and they all want to take part in it. 
So it uh, will help to motivate your pupils to learn foreign language, to learn to speak it. This is one more example of such task. So we have got lots of dialects in our textbook, as I have already said. Uh, well, and we have got more interesting activities. Um, this is a kind of a dialect too. And, uh, but this time you cannot see underlined words in the dialogue. Uh, this is um, exercise five is something like a model for pupils to make up their own dialects. In this uh, exercise, uh, pupils are going to speak about their bedrooms. So they can change any words from this dialogue to create their own ones. I think it's a very good way to develop not only speaking skills, but also their creative thinking. My pupils like pictures very much, especially they like um, comparing pictures. Here you can see the exercise which you can use as uh, to develop speaking skills and as a game. Uh, you can divide your pupils into teams and they will compare these two pictures and every correct sentence will bring uh, one um, point to the team. Pupils really enjoy finding differences and sometimes they find so uh, tiny differences that a teacher cannot see at, uh, at first. Um, they can make up so interesting sentences that a teacher cannot expect from the pupils. And my uh, pupils just adore pictures with this kind of activity. And one more exercise again, uh, pupils need to find differences. Uh, these are beautiful pictures and uh, uh, you can use these um, as a game. Uh, by the way, it is given in our textbook as a game, find the differences. And you um, can guess how to play this game. And it is really very useful and it motivates pupils to speak. Competition is a really good motivation for doing something because um, it uh, helps to achieve goals and to see the results of the work. So these are speaking exercises which uh, uh, have been included into our textbook. Uh, but we have, uh, you, you can see just some of exercises. We have got more of them. And of course, every textbook should have uh, exercises to develop writing skills. Writing is also important. It is really important for secondary school when our pupils learn to write uh, essays of different kinds, not just to make up sentences, but still they need to learn uh, and to be able to make up sentences first because the word order is correct is uh, sorry correct word, word order is very important you know and uh, the structure of essays is very important for secondary school and these are simple steps that can help our pupils to learn uh, to write sentences um, in this exercise, you can see a table and your pupils need to make up sentences using the adverbs of frequency. It is really good for training um, our pupils to use uh, the adverbs of frequency and put these words into the correct place in sentence. You can also use this exercise as a competition. You can offer your pupils 
to make up as many sentences for five minutes as they can. You um, just match the time and your pupils do the task. And then you compare how many sentences they have written. Uh, or you can just give them the task without any time and your pupils will do it. And then you check and see the results. Um, here is the example of exercise which helps to develop writing skills and to teach um, your pupils to write the words correctly without any spelling mistakes. And also this exercise helps to improve their vocabulary. Your pupils have to use the letters to make up words. Um, in uh, some of uh, our previous uh, webinars, I told about different kinds of games that I use to develop um, spelling skills in my pupils. One of such games is called Crazy Letters, and this game is described in our textbook when I dictate letters in different order, pupils need to write them on the board or in their exercise books, and then they make up words. My pupils like this game very much. And uh, now uh, we started playing when uh, some of them were um, the first or the second, the second year uh, learners. And now they are, in the fifth or in the sixth form, and they still ask me, let's play crazy letters game, please. They like it so very much. And we usually uh, play it as a competition between two or even between three teams. And the words can be really complicated and uh, uh, it helps um, pupils to improve their writing skills, their spelling. Is, this is a very good alternative to simple dictations because dictations are boring and pupils feel uncomfortable um, before the dictation. They are afraid of dictations. And this uh, kind of activity is a real fun. And here is the task that you can use for developing writing skills and speaking skills as well. So pictures always help us a lot. And uh, in this case, you can ask your pupils first to make up sentences to talk about competitions that children can have at their school. And then your pupils have to write the sentences using the model verb can. Uh, this is a good practice. And one more type of exercise uh, which helps to improve grammar. Uh, you see, um, your pupils just write correct sentences in the exercise, you check them and they can see and you can see the results. And finally, we uh, start teaching our pupils to write short essays. Uh, you can use different um, ways. Uh, one way is, uh, um, and I think it is very reasonable to use a model first. Uh, this is the task to describe the celebration of Mother's Day. And uh, your pupils can write it as a simple text or as an email letter to their uh, British or American friends. It's up to you uh, how you can uh, give this task. Well, uh, now, vocabulary exercises. 
Uh, and uh, in my opinion, they are really good because um, uh, this type of exercises, as you can see on this slide, uh, can help our pupils to develop not only writing skills, to develop not only uh, so, uh, to enrich their vocabulary, but also to develop critical thinking. Because you see the um, definitions. Definitions, pupils read them, pupils need to understand these definitions, to match them with pictures, and to make up uh, words using the letters under each picture. So in this way, you uh, develop different kinds of skills and also critical thinking, which is really very important nowadays. Pictures again, pictures help us in many things. And uh, here is the way to practice a vocabulary on the uh, topic jobs. So your pupils can play games. Um, for example, I uh, often use dice and uh, pupils work in pairs. Uh, they throw dice and they look at the number and they ask each other, what is he or what is she? He is a pilot, she is a farmer and so on. So this is um, good activity. It is not boring and it is helpful and it is useful because when your pupils repeat these jobs for several times, they can learn them faster. Um, one more example of vocabulary exercises. Uh, this is matching. Uh, this type of exercise can also develop critical thinking because your pupils read the definitions and they need to find the correct word and to match the definition to this word. There are also exercises in our textbook which offer pupils to create their own definitions to describe some object without naming them and uh, classmates should guess what it is. Um, it is interesting, it is exciting and your pupils develop different types of skills including critical thinking again and creative uh, thinking too. Um, well, uh, as I said uh, in the beginning, uh, each unit of our textbook includes the lesson which is called story time. Uh, teachers who uh, have been working with our textbooks uh, uh, for several years, who um, have been using them in the, uh, with their first and second year learners and third year learners know that our textbooks have got this lesson in every unit and it is really good. Firstly, this is a good way to develop pupils creativity and critical thinking as well. Uh, secondly, you uh, teach your pupils to develop their speaking skills, because when they see pictures, they need to describe these pictures somehow. They need to predict the situation. They need to guess the end of the story. And finally, it helps uh, pupils to understand uh, the emotions of characters in these uh, lessons and to understand and analyze their own emotions as well. Because at the end of each story time lesson, you can see the task discuss in class. What do people think about the situation? What do they feel? What can happen? or if it happens with your pupils. So in this way, you teach your pupils uh, not only uh, listen to speak, but also predict and analyze. 
And this uh, is very useful, I think. Here is one more example of a story time lesson. And you can see another situation and another story. The stories are really interesting. And the uh, um, one more advantage of this lesson is that your pupils uh, don't only look at the pictures and uh, they don't only predict, they also listen to a story. Then your pupils can um, understand and analyze what uh, they guessed right and um, what uh, was wrong. And then your pupils can act out these stories. So you can use story time lessons um, with a good benefit for both, for you and for your pupils. And I think it will be interesting and for teachers and for pupils. And um, I should say that we have got lots of games in our textbook. Games are good, games are helpful. Um, games are not just games, but um, games are for developing different skills. And every lesson contains at least one game. And to you, there are explanations for all these games. For example, uh, here you can see the game Smart Minds. Your pupils need to make up as many sentences using these words as they can. You can limit their time or I don't know, you can divide your pupils into teams. You can ask your pupils to work in pairs and make up sentences in pairs. It will be good for pupils who are uh, smart and who feel difficulties with language just to create such pairs or one pupil is better in English another pupil is not so good and it will help um, pupils who uh, feel some discomfort and feel some difficulties to improve their knowledge and their skills of the English language. Um, uh, I must say that uh, there are also different poems and chants in our textbook, which also can be used as a game. Here you see the example of it. Uh, your pupils need to tell the chant and they have to replace underlined words using the words from the boxes or maybe they can create their own chants with their own words. It will be fun and your pupils will uh, develop their um, uh, thinking, creative thinking. Well, the revision lessons are really very important and uh, uh, to make the revision more interesting, not so boring and more exciting, we developed uh, games at the end of every unit. You can find such a game. Your pupils can play this game uh, in pairs or in small groups. Uh, you can find the description of these games in our textbook, of course, but those who uh, has used our books, know uh, these games, and uh, it will be really interesting for me and mm -hmm. for my colleagues to know your attitude towards these games. Um, please uh, send us uh, information if you use these games to play at your lessons. If your children enjoy these games, do you find them useful? Um, it is very interesting for us. So also, um, there is another type of um, uh, game you can see. Uh, here, uh, pupils use the model to speak about uh, a house. And um, we have got 
lessons, we are creative. This lesson, lessons develop creativity. Your pupils need to look at the pictures. The pictures are used as the instruction. And your pupils create some things. Then you um, organize something like presentation of the projects. And your pupils tell about what they have made. Um, children enjoy these uh, lessons very much because they like doing something with their hands. And uh, it, um, this kind of activity help your pupils to communicate, then to uh, remember the vocabulary on the topic. Uh, to de it develops their speaking skills because at the end of uh, such a lesson, your pupils need to demonstrate the results of their work. And it motivates to learn the foreign language too. Another example of the lesson we are creative, you can see. Um, I should say that uh, uh, such lessons um, are in every textbook. And uh, I would be glad to receive your feedback about these lessons as well. Please uh, send us the information if you use these lessons at your uh, schools and uh, what you think about them if your children enjoy these lessons. Please, it is very interesting for us. Um, projects. Uh, projects uh, are good at lessons because uh, projects uh, are a type of activity that can combine different skills together and demonstrate the knowledge of the language in general. Because pupils prepare something, they prepare some product, and after that they need to present this product to the class. Um, there are lots of projects in our textbook and uh, um, they are at the end of the lesson and they are given as a revision and you can also find them uh, in other lessons too. Uh, these projects uh, usually help children to um, illustrate the topic of the unit and to uh, create uh, their own um, products, yes, and to present their ideas to the class. So we have got lots of projects. Um, it is important to pay attention to the table, now I can, the box, now I can. Um, Every final lesson uh, contains this self-assessment. Uh, your pupils um, have to understand what they can do uh, well. They can do so-so or they can do badly at the end of each unit. You just ask your pupils to color the stars or just to name how many stars they have got um, and uh, your pupils can understand the results of their study during this unit. Uh, it is really good uh, to teach our students to analyze their own work, their own knowledge and to make uh, right decisions, to make uh, right conclusions, maybe to revise something. So this kind of activity is really uh, good. And uh, you can find it at the end of every unit. Here is one more example of the project. And uh, again, the uh, box with, which helps pupils to understand the level of their knowledge on the topic. It is really important to tell that uh, um, Publishing House Ranak has got interactive tasks for every textbook um, in their site. And um, 
you know the situation with uh, distance study is very difficult nowadays and uh, um, we uh, suffer um, such a situation that uh, um, our pupils cannot come to school sometimes, but they need to get education. And in this case, interactive tasks are really helpful. So you can um, instruct your pupils and your pupils uh, can enter the website and uh, do these tasks as a short test. Um, the time of these tasks is limited and the results uh, can be shown by the computer. Uh, so you do not need to control this. And uh, your pupils will see the results and their parents will see the results of the education. And uh, um, we have made up uh, such interactive tasks for every lesson in the textbook for the fourth year learners. So after uh, every lesson, your pupils can enter the website and do some short interactive task and see their results. Also, at the end of every unit, there is um, a test, uh, which you can also find uh, on the website. And your pupils do it. Uh, there are more um, uh, options there. There are more um, questions. And uh, um, your pupils can understand if they know the um, information from the unit well or not very well, or they need to do some revision. Here is the example of interactive task again. Uh, you know, I think this kind of activity will motivate pupils for study because uh, they enjoy using computers. And now uh, parents are very worried and they limit uh, the time of children uh, that they spend in front of computers. But in this case, um, pupils will enjoy spending time in front of computers and it will be useful for them. And more examples of the interactive tasks. Well, as you can see, the choice of a perfect textbook is really important. It can save our time and our efforts. It can save our energy. It can help us create interesting and bright lessons. It can teach, uh, help teach our pupils and motivate them for uh, studying foreign languages. Um, so I hope that um, you will choose our textbook um, at the competition. But I would like to finish our webinar today with the quotation. The best teachers teach from the heart, not from the book. So the teacher is the only person who can make uh, the lesson bright and interesting. And uh, no matter what kind of textbook you choose, I wish you that your lessons will be always interesting, bright, um, informative, and useful for your pupils. I was very glad to be with you today, and I hope to meet you at our further webinars. And now, it's time for me to say goodbye. Uh, I will be very thankful if you send the information and your feedbacks about our textbooks and about our webinar. So, goodbye. Okay.